Hi everyone and welcome to Data Science with Marco. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about resampling and regularization. Resampling is really good to validate our models and regularization is used to improve our models. Let's get started. As always, we will start this tutorial with a bit of theory, but feel free to jump into the code right away if you want to. Resampling and regularization are two important steps that can significantly improve our model's performance and our confidence in the model. Specifically, resampling helps us validate our model and we usually do so with cross-validation. Regularization is used to prevent overfitting. We will cover both ridge regression and lasso. First, let's cover resampling methods. Resampling involves repeatedly drawing samples from a training set and refitting the model on each sample. This allows us to gain more information than if we were fitting the model only once. We can also test how the model would perform on unseen data without collecting new data. That is important because a model in production will have to predict on data it has not been trained on. Cross-validation is a widely used method for resampling. We use it to evaluate a model's performance and find the best parameters for the model. There are three ways we can do cross-validation. Validation set, leave one out cross-validation, and k-fold cross-validation. Let's explore each one of them. Validation set is the most basic approach. You have a data set of n points, and you randomly split the data set into a training set, you see in blue, and a test set that you see in orange. You will fit the model on the blue set and make predictions using the orange set. This has some drawbacks because the test error rate is variable depending on which observations were in each set, since we are splitting randomly. Also, only a small subset of data is used for training, when ideally, we want as much data as possible for training. So instead, we could use leave one out cross-validation, or LOOCV. In this method, only one data point in orange is used for validation, and the rest is used for training. You repeat the process for as many times as you have data points. The error is approximated as the mean of errors for each run. This method has the benefit of having no randomness, but it's not a viable option for very large datasets. So we introduce k-fold cross-validation. This is by far the most common approach. Here, we randomly split the dataset into k-groups or folds. We use the blue set for training, the orange set for validation, and we repeat the process k times. Now, realize that LOOCV is a special case of k-fold, where k is simply equal to n, the number of data points. Usually, we set k to 5 or 10, and, like I said, this method is probably the best and the most widely used. Now, let's move on to regularization. Models can sometimes overfit, meaning that they will not generalize well and perform poorly on unseen data. This brings me to the subject of bias-variance trade-off. On the left, the model has a high bias and low variance, and you see it's not a very good fit. On the right, you see a model with high variance and low bias. The model is clearly overfitting and varying a lot, and it will not give good predictions. So we want to find a middle ground and prevent the models from overfitting. That's why we use regularization. It will help us decorrelate our model to prevent overfitting. Here, we will discuss ridge regression and lasso. Note that these methods are also called shrinkage methods. We know that traditional linear fitting minimizes the RSS, or residual sum of squares. With ridge regression, we add another parameter to the optimization function. Here, we add the sum of parameters squared with a coefficient lambda. Lambda is called a tuning parameter. To find the best value of lambda, we use cross-validation and a range of values for lambda. The best value will be the one minimizing the test error. With this method, all predictors are kept, and note that this is also called L2 regularization. A simple trick to remember, we call it L2 because the parameters are squared. With lasso, we also add a new term to the optimization function. Lasso is also termed L1 regularization. Here, we are adding the sum of absolute values of all coefficients, and we still have our tuning parameter, lambda. Remember that betas, 
is our coefficient for each predictor in a model. If lambda is large enough, some betas will go to zero, meaning that some features will disappear, and so feature selection can be done. So that's it for the theory, let's jump into the code and apply what we learned. Alright, let's open our Jupyter Notebooks. In this exercise, we will revisit a previous dataset we used for linear regression. So I always have my data folder and we'll use the advertising.csv dataset. So we start off by importing pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. So pandas as pd, numpy as np, and then matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And of course, do not forget your Jupyter magic so that we can display our plots in the notebook. Then I will set the path to my dataset and read in the data. So data slash advertising dot CSV. And then you read the dataset with pandas and we will display the first five rows of the dataset uh, using uh, the data frame dot head method. Index call is equal to zero, data.head, and there you go, the first five rows of our data set. Now let's define a function that will allow us to plot the target against each feature. So as you see, the target will be sales, and then we have three features, TV, radio, and newspaper. So I'm going to define scatter plot and pass in feature as a parameter. Now I will specify the size of the plot to make it slightly bigger so we can see it clearly on the screen. plt.scatter data feature, so this is uh, the x-axis and then on the y-axis it will always be sales because that is our target. And I will specify the color of the points, I want them to be black. I'm going to give it an x label, so on the x-axis this will be the money spent on uh, whatever feature we are plotting. So it will be money spent on TV ads or radio ads or newspaper ads. And then I specify a label for the Y axis. And in this case, it will be our sales in thousands of dollars. Finally, we simply display the plot. So now we can run this function and pass in each feature so we can get a sense of how each feature is correlated with the target. So TV, radio, and newspaper. And once you run this cell, you should see three different plots. And as you can see, newspaper does not seem to be very well correlated with sales. So, now let's define our baseline model and see how regularization will improve it. So first I will import a cross val score. So model selection import cross underscore val underscore score and linear regression. And these uh, will be used for our baseline. So our baseline model will be a very simple uh, multiple linear regression. So as a first step, we will define our feature vector. So in this case, we are only going to drop the sales column. And then we will define our target, which will be sales. So data sales dot values dot reshape minus one, one. Perfect. Now we will fit the model. So first initialize it, linear regression. And then we will calculate the MSCs. So we are going to use cross-validation uh, here, calculate the mean squared error, and then we are going to average those errors. So you pass in the model, X, Y, the scoring, we need to use negative mean squared error as required by uh, this library. And we do five-fold cross-validation. So this will give us five different mean squared errors. So then to get the mean, we simply do NP dot mean of those MSEs. And now we will report the average mean squared error, uh, bring it back to being positive because remember they were negative. 
And so we get 3.073 approximately. So let's see now how um, regularization can, can help us improve on our baseline. So let's try ridge regression first. Regularization and then ridge regression. Perfect. We will need to import a grid search to find the optimal value for our tuning parameter. And of course, we will need to import ridge. So SQLearn.model selection import grid search CV. And uh, from SQLearn.linear model, we are going to import uh, ridge simply like that. Awesome. So we start off by initializing the model as always. So ridge is going to be equal to ridge. And now we will define a list of possible values for our tuning parameter. So in this case, uh, the, the parameter is called alpha in uh, scikit-learn. And now let's pass in a bunch of values to test. And we will use cross-validation to find out which one is the best. So we pass in 1 e to the minus 15, minus 10, minus 8, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. And then we go to 1, 5, 10, and 20. Feel free to use as many values as you want, but as a starting point, we'll use these ones. So now to run our five-fold cross-validation, we run grid search CV, we pass in the model, and we pass in the list of parameters. The scoring will also be negative mean squared error, so we keep this consistent with our baseline model, and again, five-fold cross-validation. Now we can fit the model, pass in your feature and your target. That is awesome, and it's done. So now we can uh, actually print out uh, the best value for the parameters, and we can print out as well the mean squared error. So you can do that by finding the best params, and then it's going to be the best um, score, exactly. So when we print this out, you see that the best value for alpha is 20. And let's not forget that our scores were negative. So let's bring it back to positive. It's 3.0726. Uh, so it is a slightly uh, lower MSC. So now let's try out lasso and see if we get an even better uh, result. So at this point, you can try and pause the video to work it out on your own, as the method will be very similar to what we have done with range. So moving on, uh, we're going to initialize lasso and set the tolerance to 0.05 so that it can converge in a reasonable amount of steps. Let's grab our list of uh, parameters for alpha uh, because this uh, I'm simply going to reuse the exact same values uh, to test during our grid search. And then we exactly reproduce what we did with ridge reg regression. So lasso regressor is going to be equal to grid search CV. You pass in your model lasso, you pass in your parameters. The scoring method will be neg mean squared error. And again, we do a cross validation of fivefold. Finally, we can print out the best parameters and the best score. So this will give us the value of alpha that uh, gave the lowest mean squared error. And of course, you do that after you fit the model. Best params, print lasso underscore regressor dot best underscore score underscore. Once we run this cell, oh, and not, don't forget your negative. Once we run the cell, there you have it. The best value for alpha is one, and we get a, a mean squared error of 3.0. Three, six, approximately. And this is indeed the best score. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I hope that you learned something new and interesting. In the next one, we will talk about decision trees. Now, this is very exciting because this is the best performing models for tabular data. So stay tuned.